I want to tell a little story about something that happened to me in an airport some years ago. Before I do that, I'd like to remind you of the words of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I've been studying Deuteronomy lately for our Taste and See series. At the conclusion of that book, he calls all of Israel together, and he says this, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So that's the choice. There's life and death, blessing and cursing. God says, I'm entirely committed to the idea that you choose the best part. You choose life. You choose blessing. But it's your choice, and you can choose either one. I'd like to think with you about a little incident in uh, the writing of James. He uses an illustration, and at the beginning, it looks like it's a bad illustration. In James chapter 3, he's talking about the tongue, and he says, no man, this is verse 8 of James 3, no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? All right, so here's an illustration he's using to drive home his point. But it seems to contradict his point. So here he's saying, out of the same mouth, can blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth? Answer, yes. Can sweet water fresh water, and bitter water come out of the same fountain, spring? Answer, well, no. It seems to be a contradiction, but in actual fact, it isn't. If you take sweet water and bitter water and mix them together, what do you get? Do you get sweet water? Do you get half and half? No, the bitter water, it poisons it all. And so he says, when you you know, say kind words about your wife in public, but then you eviscerate her at home, what happens? Does she like to hear the kind things you say in public? Do they somehow neutralize the nasty things you say in private? No. Now, what happens is that the bitter things you say poison it all. So when you say these sweet nothings in public, she just thinks, oh, shut up. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you're just, you're just uh, putting on a show. You don't mean that. What you really mean is what you say to me in private. Now, when I was uh, traveling a lot, I spent a lot of time in airports, and sometimes we'd be delayed because of weather. And on this occasion, I went over and bought myself a, a brat. And uh, the place was crawling with people, and they had these little tiny tables. Really, they weren't much bigger than a plate. A little table and a little stool. And I guess the idea was that you wouldn't stay long if you had an uncomfortable stool and a little tiny table. And so I was sitting there just getting ready to eat when this elderly gentleman came over and he said to me, could I share your table? And I said, well, what there is of it, you're welcome to have. And so he sat down. Well, he obviously loved mustard. And he had a whole bunch of these little mustard packs, but he couldn't get them open. And as he was struggling with these things, he was cursing them. And finally, I said, look, sir, let, let me help you there. And so I opened up his mustard packs for him. And he thanked me. And, and I said, well, just before I eat mine, I, I like to thank God for my food. And so if you'll excuse me. And so I bowed my head and I thanked the Lord. Well, he was quite embarrassed that he had been cursing in the presence of what he considered to be a, a, a religious man. And, and so he apologized. And I said, well, you know, some people bless their food before they eat it, and some people curse it. And seeing I'm the one who's consuming the food, I think it's probably better blessed than cursed. <laughs> 
Well, it turned out he was a little Jewish man who owned a whole string of shopping malls, very wealthy, but kind of alienated his family through his years of making money. And the dear man uh, needed to hear what Moses had to say, that God has set before us life and death, blessing and cursing, and we should choose life. We should choose blessing that both you and your descendants may live. So may God encourage us to realize that when we say sweet things, they can be neutralized by the bitter things. It's not the other way around. Sweet things don't neutralize the bitter things. So let's be careful that out of our mouth, like a spring, as Jesus promised the woman who came to the well, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. May our mouths be like springs of sweet water and not contaminated by bitter things, by harsh things, by maybe people consider to be clever, but they have an edge to them and they hurt people. And so God help us to learn the sweet secret that James presents to us here that it's impossible that blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth, any more than it's impossible for sweet water and bitter to come out of the same fountain. So God help us to have sweet, sweet mouths that speak sweet things in this bitter world.